Langston Hughes, a noted poet, author, and activist, was a central figure in the Harlem Renaissance. Elmer Brown was a well-known African-American artist and illustrator. He worked at the Caramu House. He was educated there also at uh, the Cleveland Institute of Art. He didn't graduate from the Cleveland Institute of Art, but he made some important murals here in uh, Cleveland. And also, he was the first African-American to work at American Greetings. It was at uh, Caramu House that he came into contact with Langston Hughes. Between 1936 and 1939, sometimes called the Cleveland years, Langston Hughes had a close connection with Caramu House and even premiered three of his plays here. During that time, he got to know the people, the black artists who were active at the Caramu House, including visual artist Elmer W. Brown. Brown and Hughes developed a friendship. It was around then, in about 1936, that Hughes and Brown got together to create a children's picture book. Hughes wrote 21 poems, and Brown created illustrations. The Sweet and Sour Animal book contains 21 poems, and for each of the poems, except one, there were two illustrations that were done by Brown. They are lovely, whimsical verses about various animals for children that literally have the sweet and the sour in them. A lion in the plain, roaming free, as happy as ever a lion can be. A lion in a zoo, shut up in a cage, lives a life of smothered rage. Scholar Michelle H. Martin, who wrote the book Brown Gold, the definitive book of African-American children's picture books, really feels that this is an allusion specifically to the plight of African-Americans. I think one of the reasons that Hughes still resonates today so much is because in spite of such adversity, there is that optimistic thread and expressed in such a poignant but very direct way. Langston Hughes tried very, very, very hard to get the book published for many decades. It seems like publishers liked it, but objected to things like the expense and perhaps racism was a factor in it not being initially produced. And the fact that nobody knew about them and that this wasn't our story to sit on, that we really needed to get the story out there, it kind of lit a fire that I just knew I needed to get the story out there so that people could know that this amazing Cleveland artist worked with this internationally known author. For me, it's a great footnote in the history of Cleveland art as well as children's literature. When I first heard about it, it was like, I felt like I had been let in on the secret. Currently Under Curation is a program that it's uh, run by the Cleveland Museum of Art. And it's through the Cleveland Foundation's Arts Mastery Initiative. And it is meant to give teens real world experiences of doing exhibitions, community-based exhibitions, but really upping the bar, having them really high-quality exhibitions, but it really is about this real-world experience. Oh, it's so cool. Like, this is the first time I'm seeing the pictures up on the walls. So what this exhibition is doing for the first time is looking back to that approximately 1936 manuscript and using those drawings, bringing Hughes's verses and Brown's illustrations back together on the walls in the gallery. It's like you're walking into the book. Like you're holding a part of history that, not only a part of history that everyone knows about, one that no one knows about. Part of what I appreciate about his art is that in the pictures, it's you can tell it's like drawn for children. It's these very animated, cartoonish pictures. But then if you look at pictures like his World War II picture, his painting, it's a completely different style. 
he was involved in a style of art making that was oriented to representing people in ways that would be accessible to the general population. This has a really important place in the history of children's literature. As one of the very first, if not the first, children's picture books, both illustrated and written by African American artists, that doesn't depict them in a racist or stereotypical way. The fact that Langston Hughes wanted to create a book for children that did not have the kinds of racist stereotypes that so much children's literature throughout the 20th century had. And so to have this kind of uh, material and connect that to the backstory was really, really, really very important. It deals with uh, educating children from the standpoint of humanity. The kinds of things that children need to learn are the kinds of skills that they will engage as they grow up as adults. Learning about how it is that life isn't necessarily fair, sometimes you have disappointments, sometimes you have triumphs. The fact that you have to be self-reliant and learning about that is something children's books do. And so Sweet and Sour is really important in providing those kinds of uh, lessons. I think it is delightful to behold. It is such a thrill to get the story out there. It's been many years in the making and hopeful that it finds a bigger platform. Mm -hmm.